Whatnots Reactor Core number 116. We are about to feast on some more Yellow Jackets Season 2. Uh, we are here to talk about Episodes 5 and 6. My name is Kyle Springer. I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, how are you? I'm doing okay. I'm happy we are finally here. It was weird to have that week yeah. off in the middle of this run. I don't know how we both missed that. That, 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 I, <laughs> that like, was this a planned thing? Like we do the You're, first five, take a week off, do the second half of the show. I, I don't know. I missed it com completely. I, I read a big article just before the season premiered and it didn't mention it then mm. five or six weeks ago. You're a very online person. I, so I, if I miss something, sure. If you miss something that is surprising. Yeah, I, I was not expecting the show to take a week off. Uh, so admittedly, we were expecting to record this this yeah. po po podcast last week. Um, but here we are. Here we are now. We've finally seen episodes five and six. That Yeah, it kind of served as like a mid-season break, mid-season finale, and then start of the second half here um, with this. But... Yeah, we are in the thick of it now. I, I yeah. tell you, man, we are in the thick of it. Uh, Melissa, let's start with you. What did you think about episodes five and six just kind of at a top level uh, overall? Episode five ends in a really interesting way. We get a development that I wasn't sure if we were ever going to get, if it might have been something that the show just very quietly kept in its back pocket for years. But nope, there it is. And episode six, that packs a real wallop. I think that's the only word for it. Good old walloping is what we got. Absolutely. Here with... <laughs> I was planning jackets. on watching like another episode of another drama after I watched episode six. And then I'm like, no, I, I got to lighten my spirits. I got to watch something else. What's the dumbest thing I can watch right now? Right. Yeah. These these two were a lot. I. Mm -hmm. I, I think the thing that got to me was that I was not expecting the events that happened in these episodes yet. I, mm. I thought we would get them eventually, maybe even like a yes. season finale thing. Yeah. Right? But uh, obviously in these two, we get uh, the, the death of Crystal. We get Shauna's baby being born and yes. all of the known survivors meeting up yes. by the end of of these two here like that feels like season finale type stuff or like maybe something that happens in season three but i i was not yeah. expecting it so it hit hit me I, and i was just like what we're here we're here now <laughs> I, I agree with you about the stuff in the 90s timeline that that does feel like how you cap off the season. But I am happy that we got everybody together in the modern day timeline. Like the modern timeline is the one I've always had trouble with because in the 90s, everybody is together. Except for that one time Thaisa led an ill-fated voyage to try and find a path somewhere. Everybody's in one physical space. Yeah. which really. Uh, amps up the tension for me and then we cut to modern times and everybody is so splintered and and fractioned off i i'm very happy we have everybody together i want to see yeah uh, what are those sparks you're right because because like in the modern day times it's mostly shauna like we've yeah. gotten a lot of ty too but it, it, yeah. like we've been slowly dripped and, and misty but those are like it's mm. I, I still feel like it's mainly shauna i i think and, it feels like it's mainly shauna because we're spending more time this season with her daughter callie which i have too. been yeah. enjoying i'm really intrigued by what callie's story could turn into or so there is something that I will come back to with that, that I was rem reminded of that I completely mm. forgot about that might factor in down down the road, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, like it, it, it feels like they've been slowly expanding the scope of what the modern day timeline is by like now we get to see adult van and we, we get yeah. to see uh, we get to see more of Lottie. We get to. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like. It, 
and yeah, I'm 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 excited that they are all now in one physical location. Um, I yeah, I I I just I was not expecting it to be like we're here already. Wow, which I, I mm-hmm. think is on on one hand, I I don't feel like it's been rushed, but yeah. I was also expecting a little bit of a slower pace, I feel like. Mm. And so now I'm almost at a loss for like, well, what happens in season three (laughs) and beyond? (laughs) Like, I don't I don't even know, because I I think at one point the creators said they're hoping for five seasons. Uh I don't don't know how true that is or if it's written in stone or who knows what. Um, Mm. I know all of the writers strike stuff is happening uh, right mm. now, I don't know if that will affect it in any kind of major way going forward. Hopefully not. Um, but also, mm. I just it, hopefully these writers get paid like they need to be. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. we, we can get goddamn good shows, right? Not these yeah. n- n- shows made by non writers, which would be bad. But um, yeah, so let's let's dive in a bit here. Let's go into mm. episode five. Uh, I am pulling up my notes. Let's start with adult van. So that's that's how this one starts. Uh, we finally get to see her and spend some time mm. with her. Um, she is w- like l- both living and working in the, in the same location. I guess mm. she lives on the like upstairs floor while the d- 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 downstairs floor on the street is like a little video rental store v- vhs um it seems as i mean she is a queer woman it seems mm. to be very queer focused um but they, yeah. those are highlighted okay. among a lot of 90s movies it's vhs specific it's anything yes. that came yes. out on vhs but yeah when we first see her at the end of episode four i did notice that one of the movies listed on the the letter board behind her is bound the Wachowskis first movie, which is a, mm-hmm. a, a queer crime drama of some kind. I haven't seen it yet, but I, I, I noticed that nod. Yeah, there, 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 there's that there. Like all of the movies she's recommending are like very mm-hmm. much queer focused uh, stuff, which is neat. Like I, I, I kind of like that for for her. I like her vibe as just like yeah. here I am as an as an adult. Um, it it kind of feels like she's almost like stuck in the childhood she never got Mm -hmm. it it, in in that sense it seems like she may have had a falling out with her parents based on a few context clues i because i i don't think she was really out in high school except for because like when her and um ty are messing Mm. around in season one it's often in secret and yeah uh, they're kind of all in the same cabin so it eventually Mm gets out but that's the thing of like i don't know before that trip if she was like out to her parents or stuff like that yeah Um, and we don't and maybe they both were out individually but they were not out as as a couple as a unit sure yeah i think the little bit we get about van's home life in season one and i i may just be forgetting things i don't remember a mention of a dad but she has a mom who is i think an alcoholic who she kind of has to manage the household for her. Like, yeah. hey, get up. You have to go to work. D- there's a sandwich for you in the fridge. I made my own lunch to take to school. Thanks, mom. Like, she has to be the parent in that situation. And we do see uh, when she's looking around in her medicine cabinet for something, Thaisa finds a like a prescription for like some intense painkiller that she thinks is made out to Van, and Van's like, oh no, that V is for my mom, Victoria. She had cancer and lived with me in the end of her life, and I just haven't thrown that away yet. But then yeah. we do see her taking that. And again, we don't know if that story is true, or if that is a lie to cover up. No, that is my prescription. And if it is her prescription, I, I think- how did she get it exactly? So I, I've I've now watched these episodes twice each because um, <laughs> I you come to these so prepared. I well, what I no 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 normally do is just take notes as I watch them. Mm. That's what I've done in the past. But these two in particular, I, I think I was just kind of hooked in from the start and didn't really take notes as I watched them and was like, 
I'll watch him again and go take my notes. I think on my first viewing, I was even kind of wondering if she was like just going to prescription places and just being like for for V Palmer May and just hoping there is like maybe mm. she's looking them up in hospital. I, I don't know how all that stuff works yeah. exactly. Um, but yeah, I think on my second viewing, it is the like, yeah, I think she's kept her mom's prescription going mm. as much as she can yes. to do this stuff. So she's not in the best place, um, both with that and financially. Um, but uh, we get I, to see. Oh, go ahead. No, I just want to say I, I do like seeing adult Van. She has been one of the characters I've always enjoyed the most. Uh, and I love Lauren Ambrose's performance i think it's neat that this season we are seeing adult actors cast who now have to model their performances after the younger, younger actors ones, whereas yeah. i imagine for season one the younger and the older actors it was more of a collaboration between the two of them they're able to feed off of each other but this is sure, yeah. oh maybe a bit more of a challenge i like what lauren ambrose is doing i think she is channeling that that younger performer in really subtle ways I'm happy to see her. I, I am intrigued by what's going to happen with her and Ty uh, romantically. I really like the two of them together in the 90s. But also I, I did like Ty's wife, Simone, <laughs> who's in yeah. a hospital somewhere. I hope Simone is OK. I hope Sammy is fine. Like you do have stakes in Tice's current home life that is going through a rough situation. But I. I do struggle with the more mundane adult drama that they mm. find. Like just, I have a lot of bills. I'm like, okay, how does that connect to a, a magical spooky forest? Does that connect in any way? <laughs> it really does What is the I lore think so. to you being behind on bills? I, so this is something in general that I'm trying to keep in mind in mm. this show. And, and I, think is a good thing for kind of all viewers to mm. just keep in mind is the same thing that happened to lost right we got so hooked into the mysteries of the island and, and here are the mysteries of the forest and what's happening is this some angry god is it witches is it time travel alternate realities <sighs> who knows what um and I, I think at the end of the day, it's going to be a show about these characters and the journeys they yes. take. I, I think I, I, I don't know where I saw this exactly, so I could be wrong. Uh, but I if I'm not mistaken, I, I, I thought the creators had said that part of this show is basically just a coming of age tale for these mm -hmm. girls. Um, and I, I, I think a, a, a theme that I've noticed so far is just different ways for them to deal with trauma right mm. um and i like part of a coming of age tale is dealing with identity who you think you are who you thought mm -hmm. you were maybe you think you're one thing but you're not you're something else right um or or you just don't know you're undecided yet or with the with the like modern day t timeline and the adult v v v versions they have this past, this this checkered past. They mm. did these screwed up things in the woods that they all seem to be ashamed of or hiding or ignoring or something. And I think I'm I'm kind of wondering if the show will drive them in a direction to return to the forest to deal with mm. it or to let it go somehow. Like there needs to be some kind of cathartic release that I think they yeah. all need to have here. Um, and I, I think at the end of the day, that's what the show is kind of going to be about, I think. Uh, and less so like, is there an alternate reality? Is, is it witches? <laughs> What's happening yeah. here? Yes. What do the bills mean? Oh, my God. Right. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I have just been in a space where I am so enthralled by the 90s timeline and the gap between that and the current timeline, not just what happens to them in the woods, but what happens to them between when they got out of the woods and right now. I'm so enthralled by that period of time, way more than I'm. I, I want to know what has happened and way less what will happen 
I think the, the, the past timeline is so inventive. I think the, the conflicts it introduces, the, the problems it throws in mm-hmm. the character's way are, I, I, don't know, I, I find that a lot more inspired than an affair. I'm behind on bills. <laughs> right. Like the, yeah. the adult problems they're running into feel, feel more like a, a, any other d- drama. Like it feels a little bit more. I don't, it, it's not quite as creative. Like, like they're very run of the mill adult problems. Well, that, yeah. I and mean, maybe that's that the is like, the I, point I, to like I really think... juxtapose against one time I had to eat sure, a bear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one time I had to, had to eat my teammate right yes um, <laughs> no but i mean that's the thing like i don't think the bills are important like i i, I don't think that's mm. gonna be some big revelation that like oh i get it now the whole show makes sense like it is just like oh yeah she's an adult she's behind on her stuff she like van is kind of a mess i i, mm. I think that's all it speaks speaks to um and they're they're all kind of a mess right Mm -hmm. (laughs) because ty walks in and very quickly they start talking about like it's happening again isn't it like you're sleepwalking again and she's just like yeah it's not good um and in fact it happens while ty is at vivian's and uh the uh, uh, other Taisa, I think, as we've mm. been calling her, mm. um, steals a, 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 a kiss and then yes. has this like creepy message of like, this is where like this is not where we're supposed to be. Um, mm. And they debate on who who's who's we exactly yes. in this? Is it like Ty and Van? Is it Ty and her family? Is it mm. Ty and her other self? What's really mm. going on here? I, I think by the end of these two, it's pretty obvious that it's her and Zan, right? Like mm-hmm. they something is driving them to all meet up in person. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of what's been going on with them. I thought it was funny when when they end up trying to call Shahana uh, down the road <laughs> and, Je- and Jeff is the one that p- picks up their their conversation there was hilarious. Uh, and the way he, he's just like, oh, hey, hey, hey man. And, and like they've already <laughs> immediately. Up, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then I like that later when he's recapping the phone call to Shauna, he doesn't add in Van was also there. <laughs> just like, she was mean to me, so name. I'm not gonna even get a right. mention her. Um, <laughs> I love that the show like continually finds fun things to do with Jeff. Great. <laughs> you, you always I like feel Jeff for a Jeff. Lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll we'll get back to something else he he did down the road, but uh, mm. then to see Shauna like beat them to the thing, yeah. I was just like, how did she beat them there? What is going like? Because they they speeding. were speeding. Shauna doesn't already, care anymore. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, that's Shauna that's drove through somebody's with, yard. Um, that's what's up with Van and Ty. Uh, let's see. Episode five. Young Lottie is starting to do some like med- 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 meditation mm. circles, I think is what I'll yeah. call them, uh, where they are listening to the woods and sharing what they hear and feel. Um, young Ty starts to go to them because Vivian wanted her to go to those um, st- stuff like that. I think that c- c- comes back when uh sean is about to have her baby and they're kind of mm. caught in that snow yeah. storm windstorm blizzard mm. thing that's happening uh that little bit was weird to me because they're just standing on the porch being like okay what do you hear and it's just yeah. like i hear the wind it's like well no shit you hear the wind it's a freaking windstorm <laughs> right? like you got, what, what do you, you gotta start do? somewhere yeah like i i, I, I do I think, think it's interesting is Oh, go ahead. No, that it's not like it's less prayer and more just t- truly being present. What do you yes. see? What do you feel? What do you hear? What do you smell? Just like we are here in the woods, soak up the woods. Like the woods will give us a power in this way, just in that we it, are. Uh, it feels mindful. more like a seance than a prayer. Yeah. Right. 
um, where they are trying to commune with something, but more so to make a connection rather mm. than, I mean, I, you, you can make a connection through prayer, right? But mm. it, I, I think when I saw, saw them doing that for Shauna and Ty as they were on their way back, I was just like, why aren't you go, 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 go out there to help them? Like, to look <laughs> I, like I know you don't want to go too far because the storm is instantly really bad, but. You guys must have rope. Tie a rope to somebody. Tie a rope to the not porch. Even like, see how far out you can walk. They're barely even being like, like, are you out there? Where are you? Yeah. They're just being like, right. I hear the wind. I, I, I think there's a <laughs> tree over there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, but then that scene a- ends with kind of both of them on both mm-hmm. sides uh, with this chant. Let me see if I can find. I have it written down somewhere, but it's uh, I feel our f- uh, our friends coming back to to us and they they are mm. both saying that so it it feels like this magnetism drawing them into one another um which is an interesting thing to think about whereas my first reaction was just like what's the point of this like they're just nothing is happening um, yeah but uh, yeah, so they're, they're starting to do that stuff. I noticed with Lottie starting to do these meditation things, I, I feel she's become more confident. Mm. How, how did you, you, you feel with, with that? Cause just like episode four, maybe I think is when they were doing the competition and there was that moment, like she almost seems to have a doubt just like, ah, yeah, right, I guess I have to do this and it felt like maybe she was in the deep end and not be like hey i've done some of this stuff but some of this stuff is just like all yeah. right i don't know and here <laughs> here i started to feel like she seems confident with this yeah i think they are drawing a very clear line between teen lottie's path and adult lottie's path like as a teen oh, sure, you yeah. can see that what she is doing with this new faith she has found like she is going about it in a fairly mature way like you can see the community leader in her yes. there at like 16 or 17 that she is later on i think there's a lot of consistency with lottie i do like that yeah the the thing that stood out to me is when shauna is having her baby and mm. travis brings in the, the the skull and they all start making the sacrifice yeah. <laughs> to the skull and Lottie says uh, that like the wilderness, like hears your sacrifice or sees your sacrifice. Yes. And then says, and so do I. Uh-huh. Which is an interesting thing in to add circle. on on yeah. on that. Right. It like that is the confidence that I saw. Like it's not the like, I guess I got to be in this competition and try and find something like fingers c- crossed it's it's like mm. it is this i know what i'm doing i speak for the wilderness yes. i'm in charge there is this yeah. calmness there or at the very least uh, she knows how to put up that calmness in front of the others i think when we do see her be uncertain it is when she is alone yeah um yeah 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 uh let's stick in the past a little bit here we got javi back at the end of uh these the last time we got to talk and uh he still hasn't yeah. said much he's just kind of sitting still there quiet. real traumatized yeah yeah, yeah. um which can't tra- blame him yeah no i i don't bl- blame him <laughs> at all I still don't know what's up with him if that is him or not mm-hmm. um tra- tra- travis is tra- trying to deal with that mm. he's kind of had a falling out with Nat as a result Mm. which is kind of what we expected if uh, Javi Mm. returned um but there is a scene where coach picks up one of the drawings that Javi has done and they I don't remember him drawing in these two episodes but it's implied that he has done these drawings since he gotten he's gotten back Mm. um because when coach picks it up he says she wouldn't or she didn't want me to come 
back to which he's like yeah Ooh. and she, he, he he says my f- 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 friend and apparently if you look at that drawing real closely it looks like a tree or some like tree roots but in those roots is like a feminine figure in mm. this thing so who knows what that means or if that's yeah. uh, the, uh, like the like I'm looking into to it seeing what I want. Um, but yeah, it does look like there is some kind of humanoid figure in that maybe. Mm. Um, but but what? yeah, still don't really know what's up with him with him there. It is. I wonder what he is going to go on to do, not just in revealing the secrets, but like we said, he just sits in the corner all traumatized right now. And is there going to be a point where the rest of the team gets fed up that they have to feed him and he is not pulling his weight? Mm. Like now I wonder if they're looking at it like, great, he's back. He's not telling us anything. He's not doing anything. Well, he, he needs to pick up an axe or do something like we we know we know you're traumatized buddy you have to get back to work like you have to earn your keep here like i'm wondering how harsh they are going to get in you earn your keep here uh as the winter goes on yeah or i mean if if this is actually javi and he's just <laughs> actually traumatized right, right? and is not yeah. some like possessed demon spirit thing. right Who and knows? if he's a possessed uh, demon the possessed demons like i don't know how to chop firewood like, i don't know how to do laundry yeah <laughs> like, like, no but this, like but it this possessed hobby he... can't help with chores let's send him back out there right but if he is regular hobby right yes uh, like what is it that will knock him back out of yeah that like does he see them eat so is or is he so quiet because maybe he did see them eat Jackie and like he wasn't mm. far because they were the one like were you the one yeah. stealing the the bear meat? Mm. There was also the mysterious poop in the poop bin. No one knows how it got in there, right? Did, did at least no one <laughs> fessed up. Who knows if it's there is a shot of Misty's there? face that made me think it was her. I don't know if the poop is a mystery. <laughs> Ty sleepwalk. She may have had like a, a, right, a sleepwalk. Could have been dump, other type right? poop there, right? Yeah, <laughs> other type. I would. Pooping. I would love if that is a clue that they realize. Wait a minute! It truly wasn't any of us. Whose poop was that? The poop is coming from inside the house. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I mean, we we still don't know what's up with him. Uh, let's let's switch over to Misty since we 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 just yes. mentioned her here because this. this is I think the the big thing that happens in episode five is that Misty and Crystal are thick as thieves. They are mm-hmm. so I in in my notes I went to go write that they are inseparable. I accidentally wrote insufferable. <laughs> and I think that fits. <laughs> sure. They're, yeah. they're so just like, oh, my God, bestie. Like, oh, my God, bestie, 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 bestie. Um, mm-hmm. And it, yeah, it's a lot. And they are sharing secrets. They are like, oh, my God, what celebrity would you have at, at your. Uh, and it's all these like weird celebrities, even down to Dr. K- Kevorkian. Yes. <laughs> right. Like, oh, my God, what is happening? Um and neither of them bat an eye la la lash at the mm-hmm. even the like weirder secrets that they yeah. share until uh crystal reveals that her name is not actually crystal uh it's Kristen, and everyone just started calling her uh crystal the pistol and she was like i got yeah. a nickname but it's yeah. not my actual name so i guess i'm stuck with that to which misty says Hey, I was the one that destroyed the black box of the plane. This Ooh. is the highlight for me because after she does that at the end of episode two, and there's no mention of it again, I thought, is this just something they literally never bring up? That it is only for you, the audience, that mm. you saw Misty do this and you saw her never have a shred of remorse, and you just have that in the back of your head through the rest of the series, and maybe she never reveals that to a single person. Like, it was quiet enough for long enough that I thought that's what they were doing. So to have her tell somebody, and to have them and to act like it's just like a whoopsie. 
<laughs> like it's just fun. It's fun sleepover right. secrets that she doomed everybody. And Crystal reacts the way you would expect, where she is truly upset by this. And the fact that Misty like threatens her and is like walking towards her, like, you better not tell anybody else. And as she's doing this, she just completely accidentally walks Crystal off the edge of a cliff. And then Crystal falls and dies. And she yes. gets down there, which I didn't know you could do. The fact that then she climbs down there to look at her body. I didn't know that cliff was traversable, that there's another path well, down least, there. Yeah, there's so some... Crystal could be found. Yeah. Uh, she goes down there, sees that she truly is dead. The snow is piling on her and she goes back to the cabin and is like, we got separated in the snow. She's lost. I don't know where she is. I had to come back. Misty thankfully has that that storm as <laughs> yeah. right? like I lost yes. her in, in, in the storm. Uh, but they were also on their way out to empty the poop bucket. So for yes. <laughs> Crystal, this truly was a shitty way to die. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I like I was not e expecting this to be the rift between them or this to be what happened. Yeah. Like, I thought there would be an argument or some like tension building between them, mm. some kind of revelation that happens in front of the group or something. Mm. Um, yeah, I was or, expecting like some kind of be betrayal, like some public betrayal. Right. I was expecting that Misty would have to choose between her friend and her own survival in a practical way. Yes, like maybe yeah, they that, do get that too. Uh, like if Crystal was injured and they all make the call like, OK, do you think Crystal's going to survive? No. Do you think we eat Crystal? Like if I, I was expecting one of those situations where Misty otherwise should have stuck up for her friend and didn't is like you drew the short straw. You're the one to yes. die or whatever. Yeah. But the fact that she is choosing between her friend and social survival, I didn't see that coming. I think that's a really interesting wrinkle. Yeah. Um, and and then if you know, I mean, of, of course, she is doing the like, ah, 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 stay yeah. that, like to like try <laughs> yeah. and bring her. But that's the so song that's playing on the radio when her and Walter are driving mm. up to Lottie's thing and she she stops it. Like she's like, I don't know oh. 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 that, that song. So it's kind of another one of those coincidences of mm. I think Walter knows more than I mean, not that mm. he can control what's necessarily on the radio. Yeah, he does have those tapes, but those tapes are all musicals just like Crystal uh, liked. Um so, yeah, it's just a, yeah, yeah, they're one of those like odd coincidences of things happening there. But man, I yeah, this moment happened. Misty said, like, I'm I'm the one that did this thing. And just immediately I felt my stomach yes. just sink. And then oh. the music does that like winding down turn yeah. to like and something bad is happening here. And I was just like, oh, shit, here it is, man. Uh yeah, God, it's uh, yeah, that, I, w I was not expecting that at all. Um, I I liked it. God. I I don't know if they're ever going to do anything else. Like, it's something that they could turn into something bigger or not. Like I said, just leave that exclusively for the audience. This lives in the back of your brain that Misty did this and maybe nobody else ever finds out or, or maybe I, they I do. Mean, and they Misty now knows where a body is that they could eat if they need. Food, yes right yes exactly so i like that is an option and maybe not the best place to find a body at the uh top, top of the old poop hill but um <laughs> <laughs> if they cook it right you know maybe yeah I don't know. yeah i'm not a cannibal i don't know <laughs> i um, i we we really got to talk about the meat of what happened, which is everything with Shauna in, in episode six. How long have we been going? And we haven't even talked about that. Yet. 34 minutes ish so far. I, I don't know exactly, but yeah, uh, please t t take it away then. OK, so episode five ends with she's in labor uh, and then episode six, she has the baby after a real struggle. I like that the opening to that episode is a flashback to health class, which is being taught by coach. Ah, the miracle uh, of birth. That's my right, the first right. note that I had 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> <Of that. laughs> and like... Misty is the only one genuinely paying attention to the video. And of course, everybody knows that even if they don't literally know it, they spiritually know it, that Misty is the one to deliver the baby. But then she 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 just inadvertently killed her best friend. So she's not in the right headspace. She's like, I can't do this. Which is also kind of a surprise that Misty's been so self obsessed you know like she she doesn't have a traditional empathy for other people she's always Mm -hmm. seeking the glory moment for herself so to see her actually say no i can't do this was surprising and then somebody talks her back into it Uh, i liked seeing is it is it akila who steps in in the meantime before misty comes back who's the one who has like a little baby nephew at home right that's her i believe so yeah okay i I have trouble keeping all of the uh, second string players straight, but I I like Akila. I like her little mouse. That doesn't seem sanitary to pet your little pocket mouse and then get your hands back up there. (laughs) Right. Uh, Yeah. I wouldn't advise that. I was very concerned about like germs. (laughs) Just the sheer fact of how much laundry they all have to do now after this birth scene, which I know is not the point of it. Yeah. But so Shanna passes, Shauna passes out. Comes back to the baby is there. Everybody's smiling, happy, healthy. I, I, will I say did my clock. first thought. My first thought was this is a jarim. And then it kind of went on. And I was like, I guess not. Huh? All right. right. There and is, then it kept going on. And I was like, what huh? I clocked was that that happened halfway through the episode when you were expecting the, the birth to be the climax of the episode. Right. So I'm like timing wise, in terms of pacing, this is weird. But then the the struggle from then on becomes her trying to get the baby to to breastfeed. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's it's Natalie or Ty or somebody who makes the very apt point. You are starving. Maybe your body is just not producing milk, which is such it, which is itself a really interesting conflict. Like you have to remember, like they are barely getting any food, any nutrients. Right. She has not any prenatal vitamins like the maybe the baby does. Just, maybe this is the end story for the baby. They don't eat the baby. I read that in an article. They came out and said, no, they're not eating the baby. We know that's not how the baby goes out. The question of what if the baby just quietly, sadly starves to death because they can't mm. feed it like, should, like their, their body just cannot produce breast milk. It's in such a traumatized state. Like that is really chilling. The like long, slow death of the baby slowly starves. That could have been something. And I did like that. That was the conflict through like the whole second half of the episode. It's just her like bonding with the baby, trying to get this to work. Yeah. Then that that was the ultimate emotional crux, not the arrival of the baby, but the sign that the baby her the, 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 her and it's, the baby have bonded. They can survive together. Yes. I, I I read that as like the connection between them because before yes. the baby is born, Shauna's very concerned about what Lottie is doing towards yes. the baby, like speaking to it at night, all 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 that's like Shauna wants nothing to do with Lottie right now because it's mm. her baby. Like she has this possessive ness yes. here. So when the baby is born and she can't really make that connection for the baby baby to start drinking right like she's Mm. like that's kind of the worst fear manifested in a in a physical way right Mm -hmm. and so when Mm -hmm. when the baby finally does start to feed like she's she's so excited she's so happy yes that it's just like like i like yes this is my baby drinka like uh, like she has this physical connection with the baby that she's super excited about um, yeah. And she keeps waking up to Lottie, like cradling the mm-hmm. baby or nursing it. And she's just mm-hmm. like, what the fuck? Like, what are you doing here? Um, and yeah, one night baby is not there. No one else is in the room with her. And they go out and she sees everyone just chowing down on something. Right. Even can you imagine. Even Coach had blood oh, around. His I didn't mouth. even notice the coach was out there in on it because he wasn't he wasn't eating Jackie. He was the only yeah. person who didn't. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you see that happening. And of course, you're like, oh, this is a nightmare. This isn't really happening. And then Shauna wakes up and sure, that was a nightmare. But the the entire last half hour has been a dream. This I was not expecting. Yes. Like you said, if you get past the initial fake out, you're like, okay, I guess that's just not what they're doing then. No, no, it is. Like the issue of getting the baby to stop c- crying, to start yeah. feeding like that. That's a yeah. legitimate yes. thing. Like it's not yeah, yeah. a dream sequence in the sense that it's some weird, trippy, metaphorical. Exactly. Yes, it feels space. really grounded. Yeah, it's it's played straight. And yeah, that it, it was like if 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 you didn't like if 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 you knew that the creators were like, yeah, we're they're not going to eat that. Like we know that that is a step too far. Uh, mm-hmm. we're not going to have them eat the baby, 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 then her going out and seeing that is like, yeah. the, if, if you haven't gotten it yet, like that is the big thing. But then also coach also ha- yeah. having it is just like, okay, this is a really fake thing because coach was the one who did not partake. He's like, he was the one that was traumatized by seeing yes. them do that. Um, so yeah, it, like it it, it <laughs> comes out that it was all a dream, um, and the baby ended up not making it through childbirth, which makes absolute sense. Like it is such a reach to buy that the baby would have survived at all, given the circumstances. <laughs> like I kind of admire that they went this really practical route of. No, of course, there's there's the baby doesn't live. L- look at where we are. Look at the condition Sean has been in. Yeah. Yeah. My my mind was starting to be like, all right, well, I guess if. Yeah. I mean, the baby started to feed. I I, I guess it it's going to be a real kid right. like it like. And then who, so if Shauna doesn't have the kid, is it somewhere else? Does does Lottie have the baby somehow? Because she had a weird a, a t- lo- attachment <laughs> to her. Right. So. <laughs> I was looking at that detective trying to clock how old he was. Like, right. what if she got out of the woods, gave the baby up for adoption? The baby grew up to be like d- d- this detective. And there is the line about how like him and and Callie did not sleep together. And I yeah. was like, are they going yeah. for the really dark Holy joke shit. of her saying yeah. that they should have slept together? But then I'm like, no, the the baby would have been like. 26 or 27 if it lived this guy looks like he's our age we're we're 32 i think he's too old but who knows i was doing like all the mental math of like what could possibly be happening and i did kind of like living in that space where thing nothing is pointing you in that direction but it gives you the space to think about possibilities for a while yeah but then she wakes up the the baby's died and she keeps saying, I, I know, like I, I saw him, I held him, he was crying, I tried to get him to feed, I did like this for a whole day, and she keeps saying over and over and over again, the repetition of it is so haunting, why mm-hmm. can't you hear him crying, yes. why can't you hear him crying, and she like looks at the camera for a second, yes. it's like the screen oh. is fading to black, really effective, like not just narratively, that the punch that this is just how they present it the the, that's one of the most impressive moments in the show so far to me is the end of this episode yeah i I think what's cool to me is that these two episodes start with van running that like video store of all of these Mm. old vhs's right and these two episodes are also starting to really pull on i mean they've been doing this throughout the show but uh, have started to pull on more like 80s and 90s horror movies like this has a lot of similarities from what I understand I have not see, seen the actual movie since I'm a big baby and I'm scared and I don't like horror movies all that much mm. uh, but th- this apparently has a bunch of similarities to Rosemary's Baby mm. th- this mm. idea I, right this like obsess- obs- obsession with the child them yes. waking up and they're doing things to the baby all of that stuff um but yeah the, like like even the like weird humming that they like that shauna yeah. hears in her dream that like draws her out into the room is how uh rosemary's baby ends oh. with like the credits and this like humming oh. um 
and yeah it's just some some interesting nods and similarities to that um but man her her looking at the camera yeah. like it, it it almost switches from her like speaking to her teammates and pleading and begging just be like wh- like why like I just, why can't you hear her? She's st- like, I can still yeah. hear her. And then when she looks right at the camera, it, yeah. she's like, why can't uh. you hear her? And, and she's like, I, <laughs> it's like, it's, I, cause I'm, it's him. I, it's a little boy. Me? Who like, she uh, never <laughs> named. I kept waiting for the baby to have a name or at least like a, a, a general sort of nickname. Yeah. I guess she, yeah. she calls the, the baby they might kid. Get, they sure. might get one eventually. I guess that could have been a clue. It, no, the, like, the reticence to ever draft a name for the baby indicates that baby. Made sure. It. Sure. Uh, but yeah, like it felt like she was talking to me. Yes. Like, why yes. can't you hear her? And yeah. Again, yeah. Um, and I, 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 I was just like, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not there. <laughs> I'm what sorry. do you want from me, Shauna? I'm sorry. I'm not there. Um. I, I, I do have to say, I, I think I would have preferred if the camera lingered on her longer. I did not like that it it like swept it swept to one side. Like if it stayed on her and faded out, I think personally I would have liked that a little bit better. But I still think that shot was just incredible. I I think the pan to the side has thematic meaning. In that it really seems like she went into a, another universe. Like just she's living in possibility A, but she feels like she experienced possibility B. Like Which is she very spent, similar to what Coach is Exactly. Yes. Doing. I think but the way Coach is experiencing it is different. The fact that these seem like variations on the same thing is what really fascinates me. Because like I said, Coach doesn't seem like he's just been daydreaming. What if my life took a different path? What if I never got on the plane? What if I stayed with my boyfriend? He truly seems like he's in a daze. Like he is somewhere else when we are seeing these flash sideways. We'll borrow the terminology from Lost and call it that. And he has one of these when he like... He comes out into the the living room, I guess, where Sean is giving birth. And they're all like, coach, what can you do? And he's like, I pressed play on a VHS tape. I don't know this. And he's so out of his element. Like, you can tell yep. he always really feels for the girls, but is like, I know nothing. I am useless. What do I do? And he's so ashamed and so distraught. He's like, I'm just leaving the situation entirely. Do you guys even want me here anyway? And he sees this this flash sideways of him and his boyfriend and some other friends or another couple on a, in a cabin. I, you know, I, I don't know if it's like this is the same layout as the cabin they are in, just like a newer, differently dressed set of it. I don't know if it's like the same floor pan or if it's just I cabin. I didn't think it was, but I don't know. I don't I, I can imagine somebody on the Internet just comparing those two very closely. I'm not that person. I'm not going to look it up. I just imagine somebody is doing that. But like they're playing charades and him in that flash sideways also seems like he just woke up to what is happening. It's such an abrupt cut in the previous scenes we've seen with him and his boyfriend. It's not like they're talking about, oh, let's get a cabin for the weekend. When we see this scene, it really feels like it's out of nowhere. Like there's a lot of time missing and coach in that scene feels like he is missing time. Like he's catching up to what is happening in that scene. And what's interesting so got, to me about that, that scene yeah. also is that Shauna's alternate reality is like breaking into it. Like he's still hearing some yes, of her, like, yes. or, or, like hearing her, her scream. I, I guess that's not her alternate reality because she was still in labor he's, at that point. He's like but in between still, both like, worlds, in between the charades party in the cabin and the, the birth in the cabin. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, like what's actually happening, or at least as far as we know, what is actually happening yeah. uh, that is breaking in to this this thing it's no longer this like here's a flash sideways that is just like its own thing right there is this 
like sense of a bleed between the two. Yeah. Um, which is is interesting for sure, especially then I, to, to skip ahead a, a little bit when um, when adult Lottie is kind of doing that guided meditation for mm. Natalie uh, mm-hmm. after she tries to ex- expose her like she's scamming all of us. Um, yeah. She has this uh, memory of the last time she was with Travis in which she OD'd. And yeah. because she OD'd, she got to kind of commune with the darkness in which she saw this alternate reality, which all like everyone on the plane burned up. Yeah. Um, and we know in Coach's thing that, I, well, I, I guess we don't know if there were survivors from from the plane crash it, from the plane crash in Coach's mm. alternate reality. But as far as we can tell, like they haven't explored that yet so i'm 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 just gonna assume like what if that's kind of the same what if these alternate realities are oh yeah similar One. or or near yeah. each other yeah yeah um what's something like that so in coaches flash sideways we see that t- it is changing space i thought this was really interesting that we just see various scenes of like him and his boyfriend together, like across different days. But the way Sean experiences this is different. She, we, I realize that after she like wakes up and holds the baby, all the rest of the scenes are her in that little side bedroom mm-hmm. where normally coach sleeps. Like she's there in the bed. They like, they made a little bassinet for the baby and we see her entirely within that room. And like only a couple people come in and when she gets the baby to, to feed for the first time, like Natalie happens to come in to like bring her a, a cup of tea and she's happy to see this. And she's like, oh, I want to go tell the others. And then Sean is like, oh, no, no, not yet. I want to just, you know, have this moment, you know, just me and him, this private moment. And like Natalie kind of hesitates or something almost. And I wonder if she was going to say, all right, but they're cooking up some weird ritual out there. I'm going to let him keep doing it if you're not going to let me tell them no the baby's feeding everything's fine cut out you know just stop cutting mm-hmm. open your hands and putting blood on a skull out here okay like i was expecting something like that but instead she just hesitantly is like okay and like leaves the room and it's an odd moment in the context of it is this flash sideways into another universe like it seems like that natalie was more than just a a prop like it like she that natalie knew something in that context and i don't know what it was interesting but we also see that shauna sleeping like she will uh, fall yep. asleep and wake up which is something we don't see coach do it's just cuts in time we don't see him right. like going home or falling asleep and waking up like we we can tell the same thing is happening to both characters but they're both experiencing it in time and space differently which yeah. i think is interesting that we've got a basic concept of slipping into an alternate universe but we don't know any further rules or criteria why these yeah. two characters and even if either of them ever shared this like i s- Trimped this thing. I swear it was so real. Would anybody say, you know what? Let's look into this further. Like it's something us, the audience, can see as a pattern. I don't know when it, how it's going to get to the point where the characters see this as a pattern. And yeah. we make a lot of comparisons yep. to Lost. Lost was a show where many of the characters were scientists. These are a bunch of high schoolers and one like 26 year old guy who likes to play soccer. Like, what are any of them going to do? Like, if they are confronted with some weird metaphysical mystery, what can they do about it? How do they investigate? How can they problem solve? They don't know anything. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I I, I don't know if it's really going to be like an investigation. I Mm. think it is just in in, in a sense, like letting go and falling into it. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, who knows? We'll see. Um, well, let's, uh, we've, we've been talking for a while, but we still got quite a bit, um, to, to mention here. Let's, let's skip ahead to the modern day timeline stuff. Mm. Um, so yeah, in modern day timeline, 
uh, Callie eventually finds out that she is, in fact, trying to see this c- cop that she did not mm. know he was a cop. But she mm. finds out she goes home, confesses to her mom like, I think I accidentally spoke to a cop and mentioned yeah. you were having an affair and all this stuff. So now you need to pretend to have an affair with dad's best friend, Randy. Oh, um, yes. And Randy is such Randy. a dope. Um, and this is one of those things that like I, I Shauna doesn't know what Randy did and it doesn't even seem that big in the moment. But Randy didn't actually finish jacking off. He just used the lotion and that's what conditioner in there. That's so funny. Yep. And and then one of the the I like I I don't like jay um or whatever his it is jay. name yeah is. i forget his real um, name but he, he introduces himself as jay yeah sarah Cusa is his actual yeah. last name i don't like him i think he's a sleaze ball i think like <laughs> i do like his character because he's so sleazy like i think he's nailing it he is absolutely dressing for the job that he wants, and the job that he wants is Miami Vice. Like yeah. he has the like the the mustache. He is that like sleaze, but he wants to work in Vice. Like that is the kind of stuff that he's doing, and what like the kind of cop he feels like. Um, but then when he figures out that it's the like strawberry lotion. He says the dumbest thing. He goes, the Q's is loose. <laughs> He's just like, oh, my God, you're an idiot. Uh, but um, yeah, so they they the cops eventually call in Shauna and Callie for some questioning. So they are mm. kind of not believing everything that's happening here. So the things mm-hmm. aren't adding up. But Shauna plays the like, I'm just a bored housewife i can't yeah. control my daughter i'm out of control i don't know what's happening uh and gets like overly emotional which kevin mm. doesn't really know how to handle exactly yeah but we don't see how that conversation ends exactly not that i think there's much more that mm. happens with that um but then from context clues we can tell that or uh no it's uh eric Kosa who's interview interviewing her so he doesn't yeah. really know how yes. to handle that but he also thinks he's hot shit and is like well, how do you know adam and <laughs> got you there um whereas callie from what we can tell kind of plays the like sexual assault card well it's like well i was a virgin but i'm not mm-hmm. now then I can describe his balls in detail. Um, <laughs> and 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 she gets back in the car and is like, Mom, I totally used your eye. Like, she's happy. Like, she seems so yes. convinced. Like, I, man, I nailed it. Like, I got right, it. Right, because earlier Shauna says, when Callie's defending herself, like, we literally just, like, hung out. Like, we never slept together. And Shauna's like, you should have slept with him. Because then... Uh, whatever he gets out of you is inadmissible. So mm-hmm. then that is the card Callie tries to play. Like, no, he did sleep with me. So now this is uh, stop investigating me, investigate him. Yeah, my word against him. Um, but we don't know the, the end result of that, if that is going to be something that Kevin follows through on or if Kevin and, and Detective Syracuse talk it out and he's like, I think she was playing that card. I, I don't think that really happened. Like, we don't know what they're going to come out of this with. We just know that Callie believes she's gotten out of this clean. Yeah, I, I, I think things with that investigation are going to go even worse down the road. Yeah. But here's the thing that I was kind of reminded of uh, that I think might come back. Remember when Nat and Kevin kind of had a brief thing and she took his gun? Oh, yeah. She took his gun and fired it and saved the shell. I'm wondering Mm. if they can almost use that shell against him somehow to be like it was his gun that killed. Because I I think it might have been his gun. Right. Was it his his gun that killed 
Adam that I don't Ch- remember Ch- Sean, I don't know exactly but if nothing else they can probably use that shell against him somehow to either hold him off or blame it on him and get him arrested or something like that um because shahana still has a gun in the glove yes com- yeah that she got from like the whoever tried to carjack her yeah yeah so that could be something that they use to throw them off as well um i don't know i yeah but that was an interesting that was like oh i forgot about that like that's like that is a very small detail that could end up being very big down the road Mm -hmm. um it like it felt like if if you guys have seen breaking bad it felt like the ricin it felt like that poison um Mm. but it yeah like i i i think that stuff will go really bad uh down the road but let's switch over to lottie and everyone kind of converging on uh the, the 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 camp that they had i think it's camp green pine is the actual name of it sure. but i don't know um man lottie is still having some of these visions we do get another scene of her with the psychologist except this time we don't see the psychologist yeah i, I did think that, that was, was interesting yeah um I, I don't know if it was just that like they couldn't get the same actor for that scene and they right. just had to do it that way or if it if that had some kind of symbolic mm. meaning behind it um or if that was like her regular one that was back from this sabbatical, yeah um because i remember I like she went to see somebody and it wasn't the usual person but i don't remember what that person looked like so i don't, <laughs> I don't know if that was the, the same person or the, the, yeah. who must have been the old one i don't know but i, th- I think from what lottie was saying in that conversation is that she almost doesn't like she's in a state where she doesn't necessarily believe her past was real is what i read Mm. that as like she she does but she doesn't like i i Uh I think at least parts of it she's blocking out to be like well that wasn't real like we didn't actually eat someone right like i don't know because her Fear is that she was never sick is 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 mm. I think the the thing here is that like everyone has said she's sick. Maybe she even got to a point where she believes it like, hey, hey I've like I wasn't actually getting visions. I have some kind of mental illness thing that mm-hmm. I need to treat and all that stuff. And I think because the visions are returning and this darkness seems to be returning, maybe I wasn't sick after all like and that's her that that's what she's scared of um so i i thought that was in interesting meanwhile matt is trying to expose her still and yeah. just being like this whole thing is a scam um and that doesn't work out like she wants it misty ends up showing up being like i'm here to rescue you nat and that's like fuck off i don't need you um <laughs> and I like that the other people there at the the commune are really intrigued by Nat. They want to learn more about her, but of course she's not talking to them. So Misty arrives, <laughs> so, and yeah. this is her clout. She can tell them things about Nat. And I like that she tells them genuinely positive things. Like she talks about how like Nat's so athletic. She's really cool. She's stylish. Like right? it's not like, dirt. Uh, she did is you know she's a good hunter? Nat. Like when she was right. younger, like she probably could have been in the Olympics for some like riflery thing. Right. Uh, yeah. Like, I I like that detail about Misty, that she's so desperate to be thought of positively that it to be she, ne- she doesn't need it and feel useful. Yeah. And she doesn't. But in a way that she doesn't dish the dirt on other people because she still wants Natalie to think of her positively, too. Right. <laughs> like yeah. The compliments she's giving are the sincere or genuine i think that's an Absolutely, interesting yeah. facet to her yeah um yeah I, I i like that misty absolutely feel like well nat feels like the person who wouldn't believe in lottie's like cultish behavior just out of like this is all fucking bullshit man like wake up you guys are following this thing whereas misty feels like someone who would like through some scientific 
process or investigation debunk the whole thing right Mm -hmm. but she gets there and is not like she is like this is weird like i don't know what you guys are doing but then almost instantly when she sees that she can get clout in 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 this thing right and and be like and bring joy to these people she's just like oh i like this place give me all the purple like i'm 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 just Mm. gonna wear all of that you guys can eat with me like all of that stuff and she seems to be an actual celebrity um and yeah she's loving it um and that's when she calls ty who happens to be with and it's like you guys won't believe where i'm at right now and who's Mm. here with me uh, and so, yeah, they call Shauna. Uh, but of course, as we said, Jeff is the one who gets who who picks up the phone, who is sitting outside of the police station, <laughs> loudly listening to fuck the police by NWA. Uh, God, I love <laughs> Jeff. He is a g- goober. He is he is I, such <laughs> a dork. <laughs> I I love I like that he's kind of also stuck in the 90s, even though he didn't have the same trauma as anybody else would that would stick him in the 90s. I mean, of course, his yeah. like uh, his uh, girlfriend for show and his girlfriend in secret both and, you know, mem- many other members of their valued high school community <laughs> went missing on a plane and showed up 19 months ago. That's I imagine that does traumatic, something to right? you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and now his wife has murdered someone, I, right? He's he's I, going through it. <laughs> I like that now the family is kind of agreed. Okay, from here on out, we are being honest with each other, which does cast uh, an interesting juxtaposition against the gulf of secrets that Shauna has never told them from her past. It's like, yeah, I'm absolutely honest with you from like two months ago through now, this period of my life. Don't ask me what I did when I was 17. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I like about this is that I I feel like we've instantly, because of what Shauna is doing in modern day t- t- times, it almost feels like we've collectively just been like, oh, Shauna's a schemer. She's up to something. Like she's playing 4D chess here. Uh, whereas mm-hmm. she might at the end of the day just be riding by the skin of her teeth, right? Like she yeah. she doesn't. She maybe there's that one thing where. She gets back in the car and he's just like, Shauna, you're you're losing control. And she just has this like, you think like, yeah. like she's losing it. But also, I still feel like she's playing 4D chess here. Like, I think I think the decision to bring her daughter in on this and include yes. her in this like inner circle is almost this for lack of better terms like keep your friends close keep your enemies closer like it it is this like i'm putting you here in this inner circle only so you don't fuck things up worse for me but also like i'm not truly telling you what's going on exactly here um Mm -hmm. there there she just it feels like she's scheming but i like nothing is exactly pointing to, to that yes i just believe it in my heart of hearts right like yeah. she's scheming um but 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 yeah I, I like all of that stuff and then we get to see all of them uh have have their first on-screen moment with all of them uh mm-hmm. right right there and i i liked it that they weren't expecting van to yes. be there and she yeah uh, she's a surprise up. yeah and the, she doesn't have the reaction to lottie you think she'd have because she really believes in lottie back in the 90s but when she yeah. sees her there's this she's weird almost sort scared of, stiff yes like, oh, yeah what is i'm really intrigued by whatever that falling out is going to be i don't even know if it was a falling out because whenever a few of them start to be like wait lottie's in charge of this like wellness center thing the response is always wait the one you mean that was like incoherent Mm. Mm. so i i I, I think it's it may not have even been a falling out but just a like hey after we went back you went through some stuff because we did get her flashback a couple episodes ago that once she got back she got put into this electroshock 
the th yeah. therapy yeah. like immediately like she went through worse stuff e even after um and so i i'm wondering if it is this like shock and awe of like you seem lucid and that's scary like what yeah. happened to get you back in this position and i i think the show has kind of been alluding to it just with this idea of whatever that darkness was whatever that thing was that was out there lottie at one yes po po point calls it the god of that place um it followed us back like we mm. let it out it is this if you're a full metal alchemist of <laughs> fan it's this like homunculus in the flask situation mm. where this like darkness was was trapped in this location and they let it out and that's not good i am but curious nat, nat thinks it's inside her lottie kind of thinks it's inside her so i don't know if it was if it's in all of them or if it's in one specifically or it's just this the, like it is out there or kind of thing mm -hmm. vaguely um, yeah yeah i i do look forward to learning more about that and learning if such a thing is true why now why are people why are all of them coming to this realization that this thing is still out here now has there been some sort of inciting incident or something that happens on a cycle yeah, I mean, I, th I think that was something we almost discussed on our season one spoiler cast mm. of like, has this happened before somehow? Is this mm. a thing that has occurred and reoccurred, um, especially with the dead guy up in the in yeah. the cabin addict? And we still haven't truly gotten an, an answer for who that mysterious dude was in the cabin at the end when uh when uh sh not shauna when, when when jackie has her like yes. vision before death he was credited as hunter but again we don't know if that's his name or an occupation right if he was a hunter in that cabin or if that's his name what are the right? chances that somebody named hunter gets stuck up there <laughs> or both he's a hunter named hunter right i um, choose this name for myself don't call me daryl anymore i left daryl behind long ago out here exactly. hunter. um yeah like i it, it's an it's a, I, I i don't i don't know like i it it really feels like there is some driving force to get them back together but that's that's kind of where i return to what i said at the start of the podcast of like at the end of the day i think they're going to decide to kind of go back to that wilderness or somehow re recreate it maybe in a weird way to 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 just like deal with the trauma or somehow let like collectively let go um mm. i i don't know what that'll look like um but i would be excited like, for that to happen from here yeah. on the other side because something that has frustrated me is that they're in the 90s they have no way of learning about where they are like, I think at the beginning in the first episode, somebody mentions like they were lost in the Canadian wilderness. I don't yeah. even know if in the 90s, if they know we're in Canada, like they have such <laughs> limited Canada resources exist in the 90s to, to know. <laughs> 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 of course it did. Where do wow, you think the, the kids so in the hall ancient. came from? Did, 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 did <laughs> Canada even exist back then? <laughs> Canada didn't exist before Justin Bieber. <laughs> I, but i would like to know oh, if no. the reaction to like after they get rescued or get out which again that is also a mystery how do they get out does somebody go in and get them they find their way out we don't know like what is that spot now is it known is there a plaque there or something what is the has anything happened in that space since then was it fenced off right? yeah. we don't know i want if like the kids in the 90s don't were have a they way of found at that location or yeah. were they found yeah. somewhere else right i want to learn more about the physical space the logistics of the physical space where they are in the woods yeah. so i would love somebody to talk about in current times like what that space is what that space turned out to be what they learned about it after they got out 
Yes. Um, and then kind of the, the, the final, or it's, it's not the end of episode six, but kind of that final big revelation there is that even Lottie's camp is set up to look like the symbol her her oh. stage did, did yeah you, you saw i didn't that, right i didn't catch didn't? that i think it was oh. there were like characters walking towards each other i was just looking at the people i i, so, I wasn't thinking about the oh entire thing from a bird's it, eye view so when they do that bird's eye view okay, shot okay. you see L- lottie's stage is a circle it's the circle and then the mm. like the 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 seats that are facing it the like vegetable uh little like planter boxes are the arms that stick out they have the pads where the the triangle is mm. and one from like lottie's cabin out somewhere that's the one that's all the way across and then they have this like little half moon shaped crescent like thing for the like it is the it is the symbol and i saw it and was just like oh shit like I, <laughs> that's the thing i don't know if she set it up like that or if right. that was like a subconscious thing it, it, I don't know, because you you at one point were questioning if this was the space that they that she is in, which she is not. We now know it's in yeah, upstate. Yeah, we learned she's uh, just in upstate York New York something. somewhere. But yeah, when yeah. you first see it, they just knock Natalie out and take her there. And we don't know how much time has elapsed or where they are. It's just woods and something yeah. about like the. The, the layout of the woods and the lake reminded me of yes the space from the 90s and so yeah i i i wouldn't put it past her having that be a conscious decision but also if she is blocking out some of her mm. past and i like the, 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 that's at least how i read that conversation with the the psychiatrist or the therapist um but yeah, if she's blocking some of that out, like how much of that is conscious mm. that she did that? Um, and yeah, I, 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 I don't know. But that's that's an interesting thing to think about for sure. Um, yeah. You have any other kind of like fi- final <laughs> things you want to mention or <laughs> talk about before we wrap up here? Well, I think we've been here long enough. Let's save our energy for two weeks from now. All right. All right. Um, the last couple things I will mention is that I've seen people start to speculate that maybe after uh, they got rescued, maybe Ty and Van got engaged at some point. Mm. Um, there is a scene where it focuses on on Van's hand and she has a ring on, but it's on her middle finger, not her yeah. ring finger. And it's just an odd, like, why are you focusing on her hand? Mm. And then there's the, like, troubled stuff between them. It, it doesn't seem like they're, they ended things on good t- t- terms exactly. But they still love each other, but they can't. But, you know, mm. like, so I thought that was an interesting read on the situation that Maybe at one point they were engaged or planning on it or something. Um, and then uh, other uh, other things that I, I think are are interesting here that we haven't mentioned yet. Um, yeah, I, I, I think just them getting rescued has is is that is the space they were in public knowledge is is mm, that yeah. something they've gone back to, to explore? Do they have reason to hide it? Are people yeah. still there? Did all of them get yeah. rescued? And they just said this, that a few of them died, that some of them didn't. This right? is also something I wonder about a lot if they left living people behind there. Yeah. Um, that could be interesting. Um yeah, I, I think that's that's kind of it for right now. Um I'm looking through my notes. I don't really see anything else that's like sticking out or um, I I guess we did get an answer about what the Nat was right about. The note was that Travis also believed that they brought this Mm. darkness out. And I guess Nat was the one to first suggest that. And so he was just confirming that, which suggests that maybe he saw something. 
before he then tried to commune with it. I mm. did, did like that low place he was in may have been brought on by something he saw. Yeah. Or who knows? Um, so, yeah, we'll see. We shall see. I'm excited yeah. to, for what's coming next. I, I, I don't really know like i was not expecting this stuff to happen yeah yet. so i'm just like what is gonna be the finale of this season oh my god yeah i'm really intrigued this, right i think we can tell where things are going to go in the modern timeline after the way this episode ended but how the heck does the 90s timeline pick up in in the next mm. episode is it like all right baby's dead back to questioning javi about stuff actually <laughs> Here's the last thing I will say. Is yeah. the baby dead? Because Shauna does pa 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 pass out. Do we know how long she was out for? We know that uh, especially Misty has a habit of drugging people to knock them out. And uh, they do give Shauna some tea, right? As as she's in labor. And then she pa 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 passes out like what if the baby is now given to weird tree lady that Javi knows? I don't know. I, I'm just it is one of those I, things of we didn't see the body. We didn't see the baby. Well, I can imagine showing us the body is like too intense for a viewer. I don't sure. think there's a secret there. I think it's too. just like. A, a dignified way out you know it's will we just, see the we see we again? see shauna no, look at something so. all wrapped up in 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 bear furs i yeah. i can could i imagine if some people would have wanted to do something weird and ceremonial with the baby sure but not enough people there in that cabin for anything to actually happen yeah yeah um we'll see We'll see. I think that's that's all we got for this t t time. Uh, so, yeah, we will see you all in two weeks mm -hmm. for more Yellow Jackets. Uh, and then two weeks after that, assuming they don't take a, another week off at some point in in there. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, Melissa, where can the people find you on the Internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And for more 90s vibes, listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities. There you go. Uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Yo Kyle Springer. And if you would like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are, of course, at The Whatnots on Twitter. So please go like, share, and subscribe. You guys know the deal with all of that. If you're watching this on YouTube, we got plenty of other videos right over here. Melissa, you and I just recorded a big old spoiler cast for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So that might yes. be one you want to go check, check, check out. Uh, but yeah, this has been number 116 of the Reactor Core. 